All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Tonight, we'll be testing out another piece of equipment that Adam Stack sent me out to uh, try. And it's gonna be the cutting surface. You may have already seen a video over at my friend Steve's channel, Ventari's Workshop. Steve did a pretty good video showing you how to put this thing together and uh, going over a lot of the technical stuff that Steve, only Steve does best. Uh, so if you're interested in how to put this thing together, I'm not going to waste my waste your time with doing another remake of what Steve's already done a really good job on. So I'm going to drop a link to his video beneath this one so you can go over and Steve will show you how to put this thing together. I'm just going to do my own testing and uh, give you all the clack shack evaluation of the cutting surfaces. We're going to point out some of the good things that I know that, that I've noticed about it and some of the things that I'm not that crazy about. So if that's something you're into and you like seeing new laser equipment in use, then uh, stick around. All right, guys, so just to hit the high points, uh, you'll notice that this is not what you would traditionally see as far as a honeycomb. It is not shaped uh, anywhere near like a honeycomb. It more closely resembles the cutting surfaces that are used on a lot of plasma cutters and some of the really big commercial uh, lasers that are capable of cutting metal. Uh, it's more or less just like row after row after row of what look like shark's teeth that hold the material up. The thing is black which makes it absorb the laser so it does cut down on reflectivity of the laser back at your eyes more so than aluminum uh, or steel uh, honeycomb would uh, it tends to absorb that light and dissipate it uh, so i have noticed that uh, it also has those channels that are built in there that run the length of the machine or the length of the the uh, cutting surface that allow the smoke to escape now i don't have it in the enclosure today because I wanted to get it out where you guys could see it and see it work. Uh, I'll be using it coupled with the Atomstat camera that I did a review on a couple of days ago. And if you haven't seen that, you can check that out. Uh, pretty good camera, especially for these sit up on the table jobs where I don't have it in the enclosure. It does give me a stable enough uh, platform to mount the camera and it seems to be pretty repeatable. So I'll put a link in, in the description for that video as well if that's something you're interested in at the camera. But you will be able to see what I'm doing here on the screen. So all I'm trying to do, guys, is, is, is I want to show you how this thing handles it, the reflectivity, and kind of just give you a, just give you a, a broad overview because it is what it is, guys. It's a metal black cutting surface. It's pretty simple. Not a whole lot of technology as far as things to break or tear up or anything like that. Uh, the laser does not take the coating off of it. It does not make a mark on it. Uh, it does collect a little bit of residue, but with the way this thing is designed, a little bit of cleaner and a good scrub brush, it should clean up pretty nicely. So uh, I have tested it. I've put new material underneath it to see if the laser would penetrate through and mark the material. And so far it does not. So I've just got it sitting on top of my work table today because after using it for several days and you know testing it to see if it's gonna allow laser through, it doesn't because it does have some little tiny cracks in the bottom that allow the smoke to exit. And I was a little concerned, but so far, Nothing's made it through. Uh, it appears to be stopping the laser. And I'm confident enough that I'm going to put it on a work table tonight and just do a few burns. Just a, a quick video, guys, because there's not a whole lot to touch on with this. I mean, it is, it is what it is. It's a cutting surface. Uh, and so we're going to do a few cuts, and I'm going to show you how it works. And then we'll go back and we'll discuss it a little bit more. Uh, this will probably be a rather short video for what I'm used to. All right, guys, so what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting out a little card holder that I made to use at events. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and frame that out. And uh, using the camera, I went ahead and lined it up with the little empty spot on that scrap piece of wood right there. Uh, and I'm going to be running this at uh, about 7 millimeters a second at 100% output. And I'm going to be doing one pass. Uh, I will be running uh, air assist on this one to try to, you know, help cut it a little cleaner plus it's going to show you what this cutting surface can do so here we go like i said this is a pretty little intricate small burn a lot of zigs and zags it's got some holes for notches for it to go together uh, and that type of thing so it should be a pretty good test of this uh of this cutting surface to see if there's any any issues with it and you can see the smoke's coming out 
on this side through those grooves. I got some coming out on the back, a little bit coming out on this side. So if you're using a good downdraft table, or if you've got really good uh, flow inside your enclosure, that's what you want to see. You want to see that smoke moving because when it sits in one place, it tends to put that sticky residue on the back of the wood, which results in the yellowing that everybody hates. So the objective is to not let that vapor sit there and cool up close to the, to the material. I do have the door open in the shack, by the way. Luckily, the cold snap has left us and we're back to springtime weather. So it's a good like 65 degrees outside right now. And you can see, like I said, I don't have a fan. I don't have a fan up there drawing any air or anything, but just the air from the air assist is really pushing that smoke out of there and getting it away from that wood. So I expect to see some pretty clean burns on the backside. Uh, the one thing that I have noticed with this is you don't have a lot of the flashback that you get sometimes with a honeycomb. Uh, if you look on the back of your pieces, sometimes in the cut, you'll notice that in like five millimeter increments, you'll have those little scorch marks. Uh, and what causes that a lot of times is that the material reflects the laser back to the wood just a little bit as it passes over the honeycomb. And I suspect with the way that these are shaped, the teeth are angled, it should reflect most of the light away from the cut to prevent that. And it's a pretty good design. Like I said, I've only seen one concern that I have with it so far. And that is with this machine, especially as low as it is to the material, if I cut any small pieces, there is potential that one of those small pieces could fall and turn just the right angle to where it would actually strike the lens on this machine. If you have a machine that has more of a standoff, that's not as big of a concern. But with this machine, it has a really close uh, clearance and that could actually become a problem. But as you can see, the air assist alone is knocking those little pieces out of the holes and they're falling down inside. So that's one good thing is that when this burn is finished, this is much easier to get those pieces out of. I can simply pick it up, take it over to the trash, dump all the little pieces out and place it back instead of trying to pick them out of the, the honeycomb. So that's, that's an advantage it has, I guess, as far as the cleanup goes. But I don't know if, you, if, if you're familiar with the little micro explosions you get sometimes with the honeycombs, but so far uh, in the burns that I've done with this, I haven't had a problem with that. And I think that's due to the fact that it is more or less an open air environment beneath there so it doesn't allow that gas to build up and you can see that little piece just kind of flew out of there from the air assist it kind of flew out into the open area here i know the video is about the cutting surface but you'll also notice that the camera mount is staying back out of the way where i've got it mounted like i said adam stack sells this as add-ons for their machines but i do not have an adam stack machine here in the shack so we're just having to use random machines to test it but i will include the video on the camera if that's something you're interested in uh, just look for it in the description below and there we go so there's all the pieces i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and pull this uh material out and get these guys to fall and I'm gonna turn this around and let you guys see the back side of it. Uh, this, was, this was the calibration for the camera earlier. You can disregard that, but you can see there's, 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 there's not any scorching. So it's doing a really good job at mitigating that flashback scorch around the cut. Uh, there's also no soot or discoloring like you would see a lot of times with some of the other methods. If you did this without a cutting surface or on a piece of metal, you would definitely see the difference. And what I'm going to do now, just to kind of show you, if you don't have proper ventilation underneath your workpiece, what will happen, I'm going to put a piece of metal down here. We're going to cut on top of it and show you. So I'm not going to move the, the bed right now because of uh, the fact that I did calibrate my camera and I don't have everything stationary or have it jigged. So we're just going to leave those little pieces under there for now. But... Let me get a piece of metal here. And what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna take this little piece. This is just a, a piece of metal that comes with a lot of your machines. 
Uh, and if you don't have a honeycomb, or if you don't have a, this type of cut, cutting surface, this is what most people use, this or a spoil board. And you'll get the same effect with a spoil board, just a lot more potential for a fire. So we're gonna just use a piece of metal. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use the same piece of wood, guys. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this corner up here. You can see that that's nice and clean. Uh, so I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna put that corner right there on my piece of metal. Uh, let me make sure I got plenty of clearance with the laser. Okay, should be good. Uh, let me go ahead and rehome. So there's no need for this demonstration. There's no need to be doing an elaborate burn. So I'm just gonna throw a couple of shapes on there. Uh, update the overlay to where I can make sure I get them in the right position. Uh, I'm gonna throw a square and a circle, just so you get kind of a view of those two cuts. I'm go ahead and frame that. All right, now I will be still running air assist. This is the exact same settings I used a minute ago. I just wanna show you what happens if you don't have a proper cutting surface. That way you will understand the full, if you don't already, you will understand the full reason for having a cutting surface. Mm. I'll try to snap this card holder together while I wait. Well, that was fast. All right, getting a little smoky in here, guys. All right, so that's what happens if you don't have proper cutting surface. Uh, that is all of the, even, even with the same air assist, even with the, the air assist running at the same settings it was last time, that's what you get. That's the yellowing that I was talking about. So you notice when we did it earlier, using a proper cutting surface, no yellowing. Uh, if you don't use a cutting surface or if you use just a waste board of some type, this is what you're going to end up with, if not worse. That's actually did really good. I figured it would be much, much worse. And then, of course, these are the back. This is the back of your pieces. So to avoid the yellowing, always use a proper cutting surface. And like I said, the one thing that this thing does that it does well is it does provide more than adequate airflow for the gases and stuff to exit the bottom because this is the stuff that gets left behind. Uh, even on a honeycomb, that stuff will collect on the honeycomb and it can be re-vaporized if you don't clean it regularly and still stain your, your material. Uh, this is like a tar that comes out of the, the wood. This is just remnants of the, the wood, the glue, the moisture that's inside, heated up really, really hot. That's what you get. So that is the importance of a cutting surface, guys. All right, guys. Well, not only did I get to demonstrate to you a cutting surface tonight, but I got me an extra little card holder box. Uh, this is actually a little box that I designed one day while I was at an event at my friend May May's. And uh, it, it just sets your business cards in here and it, it allows for the easy pickup of them when they're uh, when it's sitting on your desk. So I thought I'd share that with you. But that's it, guys. I don't know how much more I can show you. Uh, this is the this is the way that the, the thing looks. You can see the the little teeth, but this this material, the way that it's built, the angles that they've incorporated into it, does a really good job of mitigating the control of the light. So, reflectivity. I'm going to give it a really good score on that. Uh, clean work surface as far as the material. Material's clean. Uh, it does keep it from getting the soot on it. It does keep the flash back down. And I think that's partially because there's only, like these tips are actually kind of sharp. So there's not really any flat angles on there to reflect the light back up. It's getting reflected in different angles against the other teeth and all that. So I think, uh, I think by design, uh, it does a really good job of making sure what light is reflected because it is black, so it's not gonna reflect much. But what is reflected is reflected away from the material. So that works really well. And you can see it's got little divots and you can see light through it, but 
the laser doesn't get through it. So that's the important part is it doesn't tear anything up. Uh, now, if you're abundantly cautious, you could put metal under it to be sure. But so far I haven't had any problems and I ran it for several burns with a piece of brand new wood up underneath it and it did not leave any marks. So other than you, you may get some gas off uh, because there is gonna be gas coming out of these holes. Like I said, guys, the only, if I had to pick this thing apart, it, it is strong. Uh, it does not twist. It doesn't bend real easy. Uh, so it's really stable. It's got these nice little rubber spacer feet that get it up off the table. Keeps it from sliding as easy. To pick it apart, the only thing that I could say is really, really small pieces, there is that potential that one could fall. Uh, but typically, as long as your material is, you know, four and a half millimeters or so, most machines, that wouldn't be an issue. Some of the lower profile machines like I'm using tonight, it could be. So, but that's it guys, that's the Adam Stack cutting, new cutting surface. And I'll put links down in the description below. If you're interested, go check them out. But until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.